liberty lovers, welcome to the Liberty Mike podcast, broadcasting from an undisclosed location in the heart of Dixie. I am Michael, and I am here with Liberty Larry. How's it going? Doing all right. We're, we're, all, we're all still alive. Yeah, yeah. I'm sure there was some concern for a minute there. It's been a minute since we've done this. Yeah, it's been a few weeks. Yeah. So, I mean, we, we announced that we were probably going to miss the one when I was out of town. Yeah. Um, uh, after that, I... Well, okay. So I spent something like five and a half hours at the uh, at the dentist last Thursday. Yeah, that was a really unpleasant experience. Uh, in fact, when I left there, I thought, man, the guards at Abu Ghraib could have learned a thing or two. <laughs> it, <laughs> uh, I've had a couple <laughs> of bad dentist experiences, but I don't think I had anything on the level what you dealt with. Yeah, it it was really. Um, so I, man, my mouth just hurt. Yeah. Uh, by the time I, so I'd gotten to leave and then not long after I got, like, as soon as the numbing, um, wore off from my first visit, yeah. I called them back. I was like, there's something wrong. <laughs> we got to fix this. <laughs> yeah. Like it hurts. I cannot close my mouth. Um, and so then I went back and I was back in there for like another hour and a half or something. I didn't, I didn't leave the dentist till after five. Oof. Um, I mean, it, it was better when I left, but I'd like, I don't know, there'd been enough fumbling around in my mouth and like, you know, pulling things back and forth and yeah. shots and the <laughs> and all, all that stuff that like my, I, I, I mean, I talked to you on the phone that day. Um, if you can call it that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I was like, I don't know if you can hear it, but I'm like barely opening my mouth to speak. You're like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, you mumbled on the phone at me. <laughs> yeah. So uh, we couldn't yeah. we couldn't do that. One hat. And like, I didn't yeah. even I didn't go to the office on Friday. I worked, but I just like I was still not yeah. not feeling very good. And then we just couldn't meet up after that. So yeah. till now, yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. and Tuesday, but that's a different kind of meetup. Yeah. 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 Um. So as long as I'm complaining anyway, like I, so I drive I drive home from work, and uh, last week or earlier this week i guess well maybe both um the uh the government was out there uh working on the roads Ooh, that's your tax dollars at work yeah which means now that they're miserable like it is terrible driving it's the bumpiest road i've ever had to drive down all of a sudden now that thankfully the government so who's going to build the roads okay um I'm I'm thinking anybody but the government at this point because they took a perfectly serviceable road and made it unpleasant, <laughs> well, uncomfortable to drive on. Yeah, that's that's your government at work. Yeah, so glad they got out there and fixed all those problems. Yeah, all right. Uh man, but yeah. I, I, and and then I yeah of course. But what I was thinking the whole time is like all those people that are like their criticism of anarchism is like, well, but who would build the roads? Like, yeah. you think these guys are doing a good job? <laughs> <laughs> well, the truth is, it's going to be the same people that's doing it now. <laughs> well, that's true. But then they, they have the profit and loss motive to keep them on to track. Keep it, yeah, right. Well, that's the difference right there. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I, um, so I met up with my socialist friend while I was, uh, while I was up in Tennessee. Yeah. And, uh, we, we spent a good bit of time talking about things that we could agree on. And then we, Spent some time talking about economics. <laughs> oh, and COVID. Yeah. Um, and uh, like the effectiveness of masks and lockdowns and vaccines and so forth. And what I came to realize is that there's some people that are just not giving this up. Yeah, head in like, the sand, man. You know, yeah. Don't let the don't don't let the data get in the way. Yeah. Like this yeah. is this is what I believe and I'm sticking with it. I mean, yeah. I, I couldn't believe that I was actually arguing about the efficacy of masks. Yeah. And w- one of the things was, um, I said, well, there's this great big meta study that just came out from a will really well-respected, um, medical meta study group. I can't remember their name. Yeah. Um, but they have standing, uh, and they, they, yeah, they just put out a study saying that the, um, looking at the, uh, the mask studies, And saying that the masks had no, there was no, it had no impact on the spread of COVID. Yeah. That it didn't prevent the spread. It didn't protect anybody. Didn't, it did nothing. Yeah. And, um, he responded, well, were there studies that said that it did? Well, yeah, but no real world studies. 
But I could go out and I could search on the internet and find studies that said that it did protect from COVID. Like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and that was like case closed to him. Yeah, right. <laughs> I'm like, okay. Yeah. He was like, well, there's a lot more people saying that masks work than that masks don't. I was like, I don't know if that's true anymore, but... <laughs> Not down here in the South there, ain't <laughs> Yeah. I was, this is, I'm changing subject again. I'm kind of all over the place today. Um so I uh, did you s- happen to see the um, Russell Brand interview on the Dave Rubin show on the Rubin Report? No, I don't think so. I want to say I heard something about it, but I hadn't seen it. Okay, it's it's pretty recent. I think I don't I don't remember how recent exactly, but um, that guy seems to be killing it right now. Talking about Ru- Russell Brand, yeah, Russell Brand, yeah. Um, <laughs> well, he was talking about you know like a few years ago when he visited America, he was this um, crazy uh, communist uh, crackpot. Um, and now the same people are, are, are love him yeah. and the people that loved him then hate him and call him a crazy right wing conspiracy theorist. <laughs> and he's like, but I haven't changed anything. Yeah. Right. <laughs> like, I'm the same guy. Yeah. Uh, I have the same set of beliefs. I just disagree with them on the one thing. This one thing is enough. Yeah. Um, but I get a kick out of Russell Brand. Like he's, uh, he's like, he's quite the wordsmith if you can get past the accent. And which maybe that's what people say about us too. Uh, maybe <laughs> I don't know. I have the least Southern accent of anybody I know. <laughs> yeah, me too. <laughs> um, but uh, I don't know, he's just a realist. I, I actually think of him like you. Um, I think I sent you a, a bit from him when we were talking about anarcho-communism one time. You did, and, yeah. And I was like, all right, like this is a good example of anarcho-communism, like what he has to say here. Yeah. And uh, and I still think that that's actually a it, like he's a good, um, you know, like example of of anarcho-communism. And yeah. uh, and so and it came through on that show, and it it was, you know, it was really interesting listening to him talk about. Um, you know, essentially, uh, decentralizing everything. But, and this is where he and my friend are like really close is this kind of unwavering belief in democracy. Yeah. So Russell Brand is saying, well, we have to, we have to decentralize control. We have to let communities, um, rule themselves with this. But this part that he keeps adding is with as much democracy as is possible. Yeah. I'm like, well, I don't think democracy is really the answer. Like, I don't have a lot of faith in democracy, yeah. uh, especially if you want a very free society. Yeah. Because democracy, again, to me, like, you just have to have a, a set of rules that remains in place. Yeah. And that are no matter applied, what. Yeah. And that are applied to everybody equally. Yeah. And, uh, and so that, there again, so my friend kept saying, um, you know, kept going back to, well, there are more professionals saying to get the vaccine than saying not to get the vaccine or that the vaccines are effective than those that are saying that they're not. And like, okay, yeah, I, I agree with that. Yeah. Um, that are saying the vaccines are safe than are saying the vaccines are not safe so on. Yeah. And he said, well, uh, you know, I don't, I don't know, but I'm not a professional. I'm not a, you know, a doctor or whatever. So, who am I going to listen? If there's 80 of them saying do it and 20 of them saying don't, who am I going to listen to? Obviously, I'm going to listen to the 80 and and wouldn't die. Yeah. And I was like, well, I did. <laughs> if, if if the 20 of them have good data to support their position and the 80 of them don't, then no. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, to me, it always went back to one thing with the vaccine. And it, it was a do no harm idea that. You know, am I that scared of the COVID virus that I think I need to get this or am I not? And I just never was afraid enough of the virus to think I need to be vaccinated from it, especially Mm -hmm. on a vaccine that we don't know a lot about that just came out that was new. It's not like a tried and true vaccine. Now, if it had been like a tried and true, like old school type vaccine, I would have been like, okay, well, there's been enough. It's been around long enough. I feel comfortable with this. Yeah. But with it being something new and a virus that just, I just never really was able to get scared of it that way. Yeah. You know? Well, I, like I, I enjoyed my discussion with him. The only place where I really, um, got upset about anything is when, is on these kinds of points when we were talking about this kind of thing. Yeah. And, um, and he was, he said a couple of times, he said something along the lines of, um, 
Well, you're just getting that from Tucker Carlson. You got to stop listening to Tucker Carlson. Tucker my, who? <laughs> yeah, yeah my, my brother does this sometimes too. He's yeah. like, well, you got to, you know, he, not to me because he knows that I don't yeah. watch mainstream media. I've, I've been but, accused of being a, I don't yeah, even know what you Fox would call News it. Just Fox News or yeah, whatever. You're like, yeah. oh, you're just getting that from Fox News. You got to listen to some other uh, news station besides Fox News. And, but like, man, I listen to everything. What are you talking about? Well, I mean, my first thing was like, I've never listened to an episode of Tucker Carlson in my life. Me either. Um, I, I've gotten, I've heard clips from the show, yeah. but I've never watched the show. No. And, you know, how would you feel as if every time we disagreed, I was like, well, you got to stop getting your opinions from Rachel Maddow. Yeah. Like, I bet you'd be offended. <laughs> yeah, like, exactly. y- you've known me for 25 years. You don't think that I can form my own opinions based on data that I research on my own? Like, what? Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> um, anyway, so that was the only part that, that really, that, that actually kind of bothered me during our discussion. The rest of it was like, you know, yeah. it, was, it was very amenable because we're old friends. Yeah. So we mm-hmm. can disagree about these things and it's not a problem. And mm-hmm. at the end of it, we let you like, you know, we hugged, we left yeah. and, you know, great to see you again. And uh, next time either of us are in town, like give me a call, you know? No. Oh, yeah. So it's all, it's very hard pleasant. to find that nowadays. People get oh, so like into their, whatever their beliefs are. It's like, man, like this is all just like, Stupid. Yeah. <laughs> we all, neither of us have any control over this. Yeah. I mean, I, so I, I had a relationship with somebody, you know, in the, at the end of 2020 where, um, politics was never really a part of it. Yeah. And, uh, but then, um, this person got COVID and suddenly our political differences were an issue. Yeah. Yeah. And to me, the COVID question was never political. Yeah. Like it was always a scientific question. It was never a political question. Yeah. And and it still isn't yeah. <laughs> as, as far as I'm concerned, although I see where the lines are drawn yeah. politically. But um, I don't know. It's just amazing that something like that can can be a political issue and that it can be such a stark divide between people. Yeah. But, uh, but it is like, yeah. I mean, I watch it all the time. And there's definitely some crossover. I, I have an aunt that's a, a radical lefty, old school Democrat. Yeah. Um, that refused to do the vaccine and everything too. Yeah. And and you know, she had problems with the things that you would think an old school Democrat had problems with, like people being a, making choices for you about how you're going to take care of yourself. Yeah. Um, you know, civil liberties questions. Yeah. And uh, I, I don't know. I just. Uh, I guess I don't understand it. It like comes around to some of those, some of those same things that people think that they can, I mean, we're going to end up talking about economics in this episode, so may as well start this way and, and ease into it. But, you know, uh, people that think that the, the problems that we have with, um, with the form of capitalism that exists here that I, I call corporatism, um, or cronyism or whatever, yeah. That, um, well, if we just uh, outlawed profit, um, that that would take care of this problem. Yeah. And I, I'm, I always think, like, what world do you live in where people are going to do things to try and help people that they don't even know? Yeah. Consistently. I mean, there's always yeah. people that will help. There's people always that people that are going to help, but but, but on a grand a, scale, that they would do things that would that they hope would help people that they don't know if there wasn't anything in it for them. Yeah, absolutely. Like the the pro it it's this idea that profits are motivations are evil, right? And it's I mean, you got to take care of yourself too. Like mm-hmm. we all got families at home. Like profits. Are important. <laughs> yeah, the, I mean, the truth is that self-interest plays a part in pretty much every decision you make. Well, yeah, and there's not there's nothing wrong with that. Yeah, like that doesn't make you a bad person yeah. to consider your own benefit in things when you when you make decisions. Yeah. Um. I, the other one is the idea that uh, getting rid of money would create some kind of utopian society, as yeah. if like the idea of acquisition of wealth goes away. If you take money away, like things don't have value anymore. If you take <laughs> away money. Yeah. Right. <laughs> I, I <laughs> like value exists. Money's just a, a medium of exchange. It just makes, it just makes trade easier. Yeah, exactly. It, it doesn't take away the value of something to get rid of money. Money's just a representation. The value is inherent. Yeah. And people are still going to try to acquire as much value as they can. I, I, I don't see a way around that. Yeah. I don't know. 
I mean, that's maybe a topic for another podcast to like really spend some time on that. But, um, on that point, one of our big topics was going to be Silicon Valley bank. And I, I know we're, we're a little behind yeah <laughs> on this because we missed well episode, it's the, but. The, i mean that's really kind of your starting point though and like things are still happening right now like we still don't know how far out of the woods we are from this thing yeah i don't think that it's too big a deal um i, I think that the like covid the reaction is creating more problems than the, the actual yeah. event but generally that's how collapses happen there's some kind of catalyst that mm-hmm. that kind of starts the motion of the collapse and and when you're when you're at the top where we are now where the collapse is imminent like it it only takes one thing it doesn't even necessarily have to be directly related it's just something to kind of get the wheels a turning you know yeah i don't think a banking collapse is how this happens though i could be wrong we'll see and um i i don't think that silicon valley bank is representative of the way a lot of banks are okay um well, I mean, so, so just to just to sum up for people that are somehow not familiar, yeah. <laughs> that just don't follow this, I guess that <laughs> yeah. would be the thing. Um, so Silicon Valley Bank, they had uh, a bunch of depositors trying to withdraw money, um, probably to rather than park it in a bank where it, it earns so little to try and find a higher yield investment to put their money into or a better store anyway. Yeah. Um, and uh, they tried to liquidate assets, which they weren't able to do enough of. Yeah, enough of fast enough. Yeah. yeah. Um, and uh, and they didn't have enough money to cover deposits yeah. or, or cover. Well, no bank can cover the deposits <laughs> well, in that, that bank. That's, that's <laughs> kind of what I was going to get at is like all of these banks are in this situation. I mean, if there's a bank yeah. run, none of these banks are safe. Um, but a lot of this, actually, a lot of this comes out of the reaction to COVID. Um, yeah. COVID played a big part in the fi- in the failure of Silicon Valley Bank. Okay. Let me explain. <laughs> all right. I'm all ears. <laughs> okay. Um, so first, rules were changed. Yeah. Uh, that in the as I understand it, um, the banks were allowed to um, not have to have zero percent of their deposits covered. Oh, really? So um, we have this fraction in reserve. Yeah. So we have this fractional reserve banking system, which is already a scam. Yeah. Um, of the highest order. <laughs> yeah. Uh, which says that um, for uh, every dollar that a bank takes in deposits, they only have to be able to cover 10 cents of it. Or that was the old rule that they had to have yeah. 10% reserves. Yeah. Um, they only have to be able to cover 10 cents of, of every deposit that, of, of every dollar of deposit that they have. Um, and they can lend out the rest. So every time you put a dollar in the bank, they take 90 cents of that dollar and they give it to somebody else. And so yeah. you only have 10 cents in the bank, but they're hoping that not enough, that so few people come and ask for their money that yeah. they'll be able to cover everything that people come and ask for. Yeah. Um, and make money off of the 90% of the deposits in there that they don't actually keep. Yeah. Right. That's the <laughs> but, idea. <laughs> yeah. I hope I explained that. Yeah. Reasonably. No, that, that's cool. Um, as I understand it, in COVID, they dropped reserve requirements to zero. Really? Yeah. So um, so then banks didn't have to keep any of the money in reserve to be able to pay out. 10% just seems like such a small amount. Why would you go any lower than that? Like, no, I don't know. Because yeah. it's a scam. Well, it is a scam. Yeah. <laughs> and then on top of that, uh, the federal government gave out a whole bunch of money during COVID. Well, yeah. Um, and, uh, and, uh, and money was taken from the federal government or the money that was given away by the federal government to, uh, individuals and corporations, um, found its way into banks. Yeah. So this new made up money yeah. was then deposited into these banks. Um, so these banks are just flush with cash. Yeah, absolutely. And so, uh, at Silicon Valley bank specifically um, tried to store their assets by buying government bonds, treasury bonds. Bad move. Well, then, because of all the money that was made up in COVID, yeah. and I'm created yeah. in COVID, um, we're going to get pushed back on this too, which is crazy. Yeah. Because of that, um, inflation happened yeah. at a higher rate than... 
than traditionally was happens. Projected. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so there was a lot of inflation because of all this new money. Yeah. And um, the Federal Reserve's response to inflation to try and and slow inflation is what? Oh, you got to raise the rates. Raise interest rates. Interest rates, yeah. yeah. Right. Rates are coming up. So now if you have a government bond that was purchased at a lower interest rate, when interest rates go up, that bond is worth less. You're in trouble. Yep. Yeah. Um, so now bonds that are purchased at the current rate are more valuable than bonds that were purchased before the rates went up. Yeah. Which is when Silicon Valley Bank purchased their bonds. Yeah. Um, so now they have to sell their bonds at a discount. Yeah. And that's yeah. where a lot of their yeah. assets were. Well, and that when that when they were coming up short for the depositors, that's where they that's where they had to go to get the money. And guess what? That money ain't what it used to be. Right. So here we are. So yeah. So then they have to sell the bonds at a discount, so they can't recoup actually what they spent to get the bonds in the first place. Yep. Um, and uh, so the rate hikes devalue the bonds, but then it gets worse. Right? Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but wait, there's more. <laughs> yeah. So now, as a reaction, as I understand it, the yeah. uh, the the now all deposits are being covered at Silicon Valley Bank. Isn't that correct? Yes. Yes. The right. the Fed stepped in and said that beyond the two hundred and fifty, because the FDIC insures up to two hundred and fifty. Right. Um. But that since this bank, the accounts were holding so much more than that and mm-hmm. they're trying to create stability in the system they insured all depositors right with said bank right so who's actually paying for that oh we are right I mean, that's us which Ta- which <laughs> well, guess, and guess how we're paying for it <laughs> by them printing more money exactly <laughs> like, which is going to do what gonna do, create more inflation <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> which means what? We got to raise the rates again. Exactly. Which means, guess what? There's going to be more banks that have the same problem. Like, I mean, this that's what I'm saying. Like, it's we don't know. We don't know it? yet what the consequences of all of this are. Mm-hmm. I mean, we could be looking at a financial collapse here still. Yeah. Um, well, the good news is that, that most banks have um, a broader range of assets besides yeah. th- these bond holdings. Absolutely. Um, I mean, this was a poor play by that bank. Yes. I mean, they shouldn't have been investing the way they were. <laughs> I mean, if I mean, you would think a bank like that would have like a board of people who makes like decent decisions about how to invest all this money. <laughs> well, um, why do they need to do that? What do you mean? I mean, there's no, there's no, perp, there's no risk to them. Well, no, yeah, yeah. yeah I mean, as long still... as the Fed's going to step in and and make everybody whole, then the, the the bank has lost nothing. Well, I mean, I'm sure all the executives that made those decisions aren't there anymore. Although I say that, I think one of them was on the um, one of those executives was from Lehman Brothers, so. oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, which was just kind <laughs> of this. Keep listening to this guy, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah. Um, so yeah, that that's that's part of the problem. And then now, of course, the Fed's created this moral hazard uh, by telling banks that they can take riskier investments yeah. because they'll cover them. They're insured all yeah. the way. Doesn't matter. Uh, and another problem that it creates is that, um, I, I hope I, I was going to pull this clip, but then I, I just didn't, um, uh, but, uh, Janet Yellen, um, was speaking to the house of representatives and, uh, one of the representatives from Oklahoma, I believe was asking her, does, is every bank does every bank now have this benefit? Are all deposits in all banks now insured well, by the federal government? And this is where she screwed up because the answer to that should have been yes. She should have just threw it out there. Yeah. Like that would have, th- that would have oh. been the, I mean, I don't agree with it obviously, yeah. but if, if, for someone in her position with the sway that her words have, that's what she should have said. If she had been like, hey, look, yeah, we're going to, if if your bank goes down, we're going to protect your money. You have nothing to worry about. That would have like added some stability to the system. But that's not what she said. It would have added some stability to the system for consumers. Well, yeah. Yeah. Which is, I guess, where the concern is. But um, it creates an even greater moral hazard, obviously, to all the banks out there who well, now... Yeah. 
feel like they can make risky decisions and they don't have to worry about it. But the truth is, is what she says true. Like these small regional banks, they're not going to necessarily bail them out. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And that, and that's what she did say is that there were a couple of groups of people that would get together and decide if they thought it would be a systemic problem if a bank failed. And if they thought it would be a systemic problem, if the bank failed, then they would insure it. Yeah. And if they didn't, Oh, well, well, and the, but ultimately it falls to her because all of those groups had to, cause she listed them off, all had to make a vote. And then the final word went to her like up or down. Oh, was it her? I thought it actually went to the executive. I thought it was the, I thought it was her. If I remember Biden. that, I, I don't, I wish I should have pulled the clip. I, yeah, guess. I wish I had oh, the well. clip now because I could be mistaken, but I thought she said that the final word went to mm -hmm. her. Um, um at, at any rate, uh, the, <laughs> it, it does create this, it creates a different kind of run. So now people who have a lot of money, um, are going to move it into big banks. Yeah. Like the big established yeah. banks. Cause if you got um, $10 million, dollars, like 250 insured isn't enough. Right. But if you know, you put your money in one of the big banks that if it goes down, the system goes down, mm -hmm. well, your money's going to be safe. Exactly. You no know, matter how much you have in Exactly. Because you know the Fed will step in and insure those deposits. And so, of course, the result is that it once again concentrates the business into the large, yep. like the bigger, the bigger banks, the bigger established banks. Makes it harder for smaller local banks to survive. Yeah. And, uh, and we have um, less... Uh, I guess we have less resilience is the way to say it. Less resilience in the bank market because now there's fewer banks. Yeah. Of course, they can't be allowed to fail, I guess. Yeah. Now, here's the alternative. And, and this is what we would advocate. In a, in a free market system, what would happen is Silicon Valley Bank would have failed. Yeah. The people that had their money in Silicon Valley Bank would have lost it. Yeah. Now, um, this incentivizes a couple of different kinds of things. Like even if you... If you keep in place the FDIC insurance up to two hundred and fifty thousand, yeah. now what it does is it incentivizes um, people with m much more money than that to spread their money around to different financial institutions. Exactly. Put hundred two hundred and fifty thousand in in a bunch of different financial institutions instead of throwing all your ten million into Silicon Valley Bank. Yeah. Um, so that that's actually good for the entire industry. Yeah. <laughs> And, yeah. uh, and it incentivizes, um, more banks to establish themselves. Yeah. Like, so there's more money being put into more banks than more banks are going to be drawn into the industry or more people are going to be drawn into the banking industry. Yeah. Um, which again, adds another layer of resilience in the system. Yeah. Um, Silicon Valley bank fails, they fail. Well, and, and that forces investors, especially investors with a lot of money to be really careful about where they put their money. Well, and and forces, secondly, Oh, go ahead. Yeah. I was just going to say, I think what you're thinking is the, mm -hmm. the, um, the bank will make better decisions mm -hmm. with that money because they know if they screw up, they're done and that there's nobody coming behind them to come help them. So they will, they, they wouldn't be investing in government bonds. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> While the interest rates are going up. <laughs> mm -hmm. Um, or they would have at least uh, diversified their investments. Like yeah. put some in bonds, put some, you know, in, in other places to try and, yeah. um, and spread out the risk. Absolutely. Which once again, helps everybody. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it puts more money in more places. Exactly. And more investment. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and of course, uh, investing in government bonds helps no one at all. Uh, well, I don't know. It's good for the government. <laughs> yeah, like. I guess that's true. Like I said, but, helps yeah, no one exactly at all. Exactly, though. Like I, but I repeat myself. <laughs> um, so uh, that's all I really... I, I, so I don't think that there's a systemic problem with the banking system. Uh, I think there's a systemic problem right. with the Federal Reserve. <laughs> Well, I mean, but, there's, there is, I mean, the, there's a lot of problems with our system and it's mm -hmm. so just delicate, like particularly right now, but I think it's always delicate. Like even pre COVID, I mean, our system is just way messed up on so many levels. It wouldn't, that's, that's my worry more than anything is that it wouldn't take much to topple all of us. Yeah. Um, I do think we're far enough away from the, the, banks that have kind of folded mm -hmm. um, that I don't think we've got anything really to worry about. Yeah. But 
Well, here's the thing that I'm, I was more concerned about when I read about it, um, is that, uh, the, um, like one of the Australian, one of the big Australian national banks, and it may be like the Australian national bank. I, I don't know their system well enough to, to know, to really understand if it's, if this is like, um, bank of America <laughs> yeah, <laughs> or if it's like the central bank. Okay. Um, yeah. but anyway, uh, a, a, a big Australian bank, whether it be the central bank or a big national bank, yeah. um, got in trouble with the, uh, um, Singapore, I keep thinking Shanghai, but I don't think that's right. I'm pretty sure yeah. it's Singapore Gold Exchange. Okay. Um, because they were diluting down their gold bars too much. Oh, really? Yeah. So there's a, a certain percentage of gold that gold bars have to be. Yeah. And uh, so I guess this bank um, was starting to see that they were having a little bit of, uh, of trouble. And so they started adding silver into their gold bars. Yeah. Um, which is not unusual. Yeah, yeah. But it only you only do that for so much, right? Yeah, but it has to be a certain percentage of gold. Yeah, to be a gold bar. To be yeah. a gold bar, <laughs> and uh, so they had been exchanging them through uh, through. Uh, again, I want to say Singapore. Yeah. That might be wrong. Yeah, I like. It was some a big exchange. Yeah, I know yeah. that there's a big exchange in Singapore, so I think that that was it. Yeah. Um, I'm going to stop qualifying. We'll just assume that I'm right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> might as well, right? <laughs> don't, don't, you might want to check this for yourself before you start exchanging with Singapore. Yeah. Anyway, um, so they had been exchanging their gold bars uh, in, in Singapore or in a big gold exchange. Yeah. And uh, they just got called out for diluting down their gold bars beyond what's required. Yeah. And so it just the check just happened. But it's actually been going on for years. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. So they so went back and they found gold, gold bars is... from like three years ago that were Ooh. not the level of of gold that they're supposed to be. Not the percentage of gold that they're supposed so to be. So it could potentially be a bunch of gold on the market that's yeah. Not it makes what you wonder. Like I started thinking, like, where did I get my gold from last time? <laughs> so I really was a little concerned. Yeah. Um, and uh, but the other problem is that now the gold exchange is like. Give us our money back and take these not quite gold bars. Yeah. Right. Back. Yeah. Well, now that's a problem. Yeah. There's a real problem. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I'm actually more concerned with that kind of uh, yeah. of issue. Of situation. Yeah. Yeah. Because the gold is real money. Yeah. Yeah. That's the, the there is. Yeah. <laughs> gold is the only money. <laughs> but, but that is literal debasement of currency. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, that's exactly what debasement is, is mixing in other metals to your precious metals to to make them not the value that they're supposed to be. Yeah. Creates inflation. It does that. Yeah. It does that. So yeah. uh, so my cousin in Australia, maybe she can correct me on some of the details of yeah. that. Or maybe Australia is not talking about it at all on the news and she doesn't even know. <laughs> it's very possible. <laughs> Um, if it's I mean, anything like our media, <laughs> yeah, exactly. It wasn't on. A, it wasn't on. Uh, certainly wasn't on mainstream American news. I, I think yeah. I actually came across the article um, on a uh, on a gold bug site. Yeah, um, yeah. where hmm. they were talking about it. Yeah, because I've been like trolling through a bunch of financial sites trying to get more details on the uh, Silicon Valley bank thing. I yeah. think I, and I came across this article in that search. Yeah. And I, I think I was on a, uh, like a, you a know, gold, a gold site. exchange site yeah. when I found the article anyway. Um, so that, so. that kind of thing actually concerns me more, but I, I get your point. Like we understand that we are, uh, we are not real solid economically in this country right now, despite the, yeah, the employment numbers or yeah. whatever yeah. they're touting today. Yeah. Uh, and it may not take much of a nudge for us to really go into uh, the next recession. Like the bubble's yeah. got to burst at some point, but I don't oh, yeah. think that th this is the trigger. You don't think this is it? I don't it think may so. not be. I mean, we enough time has passed. I think you may be right that, mm -hmm. you know, we're past it. Yeah. And I would have said that uh, a week ago if we had recorded, but <laughs> yeah, cause me and you discussed it and I was, cause I was all like, I don't know, man, I yeah. don't like this. This is not good. Yeah. You can back me up. <laughs> yeah. No, yeah. You were, you were, you were saying the same thing you are now. So yeah, he's, he, if nothing else, he's consistent. <laughs> <laughs> right. Things can change. <laughs> yes. Um, 
All right, so... All right. Where you won't go now. Well, now I'm going to talk about the whiskey so that Jeff can't avoid it. Oh, yeah. We're going to have the whiskey <laughs> conversation <laughs> now. Right in the middle of the podcast. Oh, yeah, there you go. Because we met, we were going to record on St. Patrick's Day. Oh, that's right. Yeah. And, and we didn't because I couldn't open my mouth. <laughs> All right. But I was able to open my mouth enough to drink this on that night. Yeah. And this is what we would have been drinking if we had recorded that night in honor of St. Patrick's Day yeah. is the uh, Red Breast 12 cask strength Irish whiskey. And so, so that's what we're drinking tonight. And so I will say, I was a little standoffish about it. I didn't know what, what I was getting into. Yeah. But I like it. Yeah. It's, well, cause it's, it's good. It's it's a pure barley yeah. spirit. It's definitely got some flavors that I'm not used to. Yeah. That, that are different from what I would normally drink. Mm. But they're not bad. Yeah. There's a lot there, too. Yeah. Uh, like, it's actually, like, really pretty light. Um, but it, I don't know, there's... There's a lot of complexity in it anyway. I, I, yeah. I've always thought of Irish whiskey as, as being like pretty delicate. Yeah. Um, but they're but they're complex. Like there's a lot there's a lot of flavor in there if you if you yeah. let it go. A oh bit. yeah. Um, they just it, there's nothing overpowering about it. And yeah. I I do like a a richer bolder. Yeah. Whiskey, which is why I like bourbon. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and rye, right. I, I guess yeah. particularly, but. Um, but certainly Irish whiskey has its place, and this is a, this is a really good one. Oh, I agree. Um, if you had uh, if you had red breast, you won't go back to Jameson. Oh yeah, yeah. I'm not a big <laughs> fan of Jameson, which is yeah, another reason either. I was kind of standoffish about it. Like I'll drink mm-hmm. Jameson, but it's not something I look mm-hmm. for, you know. So, um, so let's hit a couple of little things, and then we'll move on to our other big topic. All right. How's that sound? Sounds so, like um, there was a war powers vote on Syria a couple of weeks ago. Yeah. How'd that go? Um, poorly for our <laughs> side. Yeah. Right, for the for the non-interventionist pro-peace side, um, it went poorly. So uh, there were about a hundred people in the House that voted for the War Powers Act. Is roughly evenly split between Republicans and Democrats. Yeah. Um, and the other three hundred and whatever people voted to uh, to maintain the really truly illegal war that we have going on in Syria. So the other 300 are bought and paid for by Northrop Grumman, Boeing, all of these Raytheon. big Raytheon, yeah. Yeah. Okay. And the um the company that I think of as the uh, airplane company that I can't ever remember the name of. Oh yeah. We have this conversation every I, time I, and I never I, remember I, it. I don't you know would, why you I You would think I would remember it after all these years. <laughs> Uh, yeah, me too. I like I've written articles about them. I yeah. still can't remember their name. Uh, it's it's two words. Yeah, all right. <laughs> so it's the two word airplane company. Yeah. That gets ninety something percent of its revenue from the government. Yeah. Um Lockheed Martin. Ah yes. Lockheed Martin. All right. Well we had a little <laughs> little mishap. Yeah. Little technical difficulties. We had such Kinda. a nice transition into the next topic and like, can't do that again. Yeah, it's gone. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well. Um, anyway, uh, Syrian war powers vote. Sucks. Yeah. yeah. And we, we're just going to keep... Okay, so remember, um, Obama started the war in Syria. Trump tried to get us out. That's the one that they actually... That they said that they lied to him about the number... Uh, about still having troops in Syria. Yeah. Uh, which is insane. Like, regardless, <laughs> yeah, the president of, what you of the United States doesn't is. I mean, he he doesn't. One of his jobs is to know where the military is at. <laughs> yeah, I actually talked to somebody. I was talking about this, um, and they were like, "Well, I don't want anybody listening to Donald Trump anyway." Like, wh- okay, and it was a person that agrees that we shouldn't be in Syria. Yeah, but hates Donald Trump to the point yeah. that. It's okay if the military takes over the military away from c- civilian leadership um, because uh, I don't like him. Even to do man, something that I don't want them bad. to do. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Incredible. Yeah. Uh, I, I can't understand that way of thinking. Yeah. Um, I didn't like him either, but <laughs> I would rather have him in control of the military than the Pentagon. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well. Anyway, so yeah, we'll we'll remain in Syria where our only um the, our only purpose militarily is to prevent the legitimate government of Syria from controlling all of their resources. Yeah. That's why we're there. Yeah. Is to uh 
to steal natural resources from the Syrian government for American corporations. That's the purpose of our military in Syria. Got to get that oil. Yep. Yep. It's amazing. (laughs) Um, so the other thing that I wanted to, uh, to the other little thing that I wanted to talk about, um, cause this is, this is old, old news now, but mm. I, I just want to, I just want to point this kind of thing out, um, is the, uh, the January 6th stuff that was yeah. coming up. And, um, specifically, I, I think everybody saw, uh, Schumer's response to Tucker Carlson releasing January 6th video. Yeah kind of debunking some of the stories that went through. Now there's the video yeah. by the way. Like, <laughs> and I understand that he, of course, one of the things that they said is, well, he's, he's selectively editing. Well, yeah, so are you. Yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> all we've seen is selectively edited video. Now this yeah. is what I think they should have done. Yeah. Um, I think if they were going to release the, the January 6th video, they should have created a website and just uploaded all 40,000 hours of it yeah. to the internet and said, here's the website. Dig in. Yeah. Well, I think the fear with that for everybody. Yeah. The only, and the only reason I think that, well, no, there's plenty of reason that they didn't do that. But one of the arguments against something like that would be if you just turned it loose to the internet, then you would end up with all of these doctored videos and nobody would know what was real and what wasn't. It would be like fake news out of control. Oh, well, maybe. I mean, I I can see that, but. They, but, you could always reference. You could, you could not trust video that wasn't referenced back to the to their site. Yeah, yeah, it's true. So I, I think yeah. I, I don't like I don't like limited control of information. Well, yeah, and that was the reason I thought it was good that it was at least released to somebody. Mm-hmm. But I, I I think if they were going to release it, they should have at, at a minimum released it to all of the major news outlets. And let them all. Take yeah, because their, we can trust them. Well, no, not because I trust them, but I mean at least. <laughs> so why? Why? Uh, this is back to the banks thing, right? Yeah. Why should they get it, but not any little smaller news site? Um, yeah. Wh- why shouldn't anybody with a press pass not have access to it? Well, and yeah. even there, I think that that's that's, that's still BS not too. enough. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I get where you're coming from on that. So to sure. me, it's all or nothing. Um, I think that's just what the argument would be, though, is that if you released it to everybody, you know, you would end up with all these fake videos out there. And there's Mm -hmm. so many hours of it, like, it'd be difficult to verify what was what. Mm -hmm. Um, But I'm with you. Like, I mean, I think that it should just be released. If nothing else, just released out to everybody so they can have at it. You know what I mean? Yeah. So. Yeah, I agree. Um, But But the thing is there is that, the big news with all of that is, is that a bunch of this, this was all like a made up thing. Like, I mean, it's not, I say made up, like it was overblown. Yeah. The event happened. It was a bit yeah. hyperbolic the way it was presented. Yeah, exactly. Um, so, the, but the point that I actually wanted to make was um, Schumer gave the speech the next day after Tucker Carlson released the first set of videos. Oh yeah. And, uh, I, I mean, I hope most people have seen that by now. Again, I didn't bother to pull you the clip. clip it, yeah. But um, he he says uh, he he addresses Fox News specifically and Rupert Murdoch. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And um and says uh, do not let him release any more of this video. Yeah. And uh, Tucker Carlson had said on his show, I'm told. Yeah. Because <laughs> I've never watched it. Me either. <laughs> but, as established earlier in this episode. Yeah. Um, I am told that Tucker Carlson said on his show, actually, I, I heard this on Dave Smith, um, that uh, who does apparently watch Tucker Carlson, um, that he said that he was going to release another set of videos on his next the next day. Yeah. Uh, so Schumer got up, made his threat, because that's what I see it as. It's oh, a yeah. threat to Fox News. It absolutely um, is. Not a to allow any more of this video to come out. Yeah. And since then, I I'm pretty sure no more of this video has come out. So just like you don't watch Tucker, so I don't know one way or the other. But mm-hmm. I haven't heard anything about any more video coming out. Yeah. Um, um I would like to think that he wouldn't just bend to that type. I mean, being gifted this this video the way he was, mm-hmm. that he wouldn't just bend to those type of threats, but when 
when it comes to, when the government starts threatening you, it's a good idea to pay attention. Yeah. Well, in in his case, it would be like if you know, I either have this platform or I don't potentially. Yeah. Um, so if the government threatens the the station, the Fox News itself, yeah. and Fox News says you can't show any more of this video. Yeah. Or you're gone. Yeah. Like you either have this platform where you can address people or or you don't. Yeah. And you look at getting rid of losing it all. Mm-hmm. You know. So it's a legitimate yeah. threat. There's nothing that can end a business as quickly as government. Absolutely. Yep. That's that's the number one threat to any mm-hmm. business. Yeah. So and uh I was now I'm trying to think of um I was watching something on Jimmy Dore the other day and actually like his topic was interesting and I thought it was something that we might like to address on the podcast, but I didn't write it down. Now I can't, I can't remember what it was, but whatever it was, um, he, uh, he was saying, well, you know, and you're not going to hear any of this on, um, CNN or CBS or ABC or he said, you might, might hear it on Tucker Carlson. That's the only place that you might hear it because ironically, They gave him freedom when they got everybody to stop advertising with him because now he's not beholden to anybody. Yeah, now he's not beholden to a bunch of advertisers, right? (laughs) And I thought that was an interesting little insight, which I hadn't really considered before. I thought that that was kind of interesting. Um, So the but the last big topic is China. So while we were going on, um, while the U.S. media was going on about how China. And the government, I should say, uh, you know, who was giving their talking points to the media, yeah. um, was going on about how China was preparing to give lethal aid to uh, Russia in their war against Ukraine. Um, China was uh, actually helping mediate negotiations between Saudi Arabia and Iran that ended with Saudi Arabia and Iran restoring diplomatic ties. Yeah. This is a big deal. Not if you're listening to the mainstream media because they've barely mentioned it. Yeah, but this is a big deal. This is a huge step. Yeah. Um, it may actually put an end to the Yemen war. Yeah. Which, um, you know, Bernie Sanders may have been able to do with his uh, war powers resolution that he withdrew. Of course, it could have ended the same way that the this other one did. Yeah, and I fear it probably <laughs> would have, but maybe not. I don't not. know. There was a real movement towards that. So, like yeah. the Syria War Powers Resolution, it came and w- came out and was voted on really quickly. Yeah. I think that was maybe by design too, because yeah. the the Yemen resolution sat there for a while and it gave time to have a real movement for swell the, behind it. Oh, absolutely. Um, and it may be that when uh, I think it was Matt Gates who introduced the Syrian War Powers Resolution, um, it may be that that when they saw that come up, they were like, let's go ahead and vote on it now before the people get involved. Let's smash it, yeah, yeah. Um, because it's harder to ignore like a grassroots movement of people that are, like people that are constantly calling their congressmen and stuff like that. Oh, yeah. Um, so that may have been the new it, it, <laughs> the new one. Because yeah. I, I can't help but think that the, the uh, Yemen resolution would have done well or the Biden administration wouldn't have put pressure on Bernie to withdraw it. Yeah. Yeah. Now there's something to that for sure. I mean, I don't know. Yeah. But I, I suspect that if they thought that it was going to fail anyway, yeah. they wouldn't have bothered. Why would they bother? Yeah. Other than the fact you just don't want any more attention drawn towards what they're doing there. Yeah, I guess. Um, so, uh, yeah, China negotiated a, uh, a restoration of diplomatic ties or helped mediate negotiations between Iran and Saudi Arabia to restore diplomatic ties. Um, and the uh, China's a big winner. Uh, Iran and Saudi Arabia are big winners. Yemen might be a big winner. Um, losers are the United States and Israel. Yeah. And um, But I think more than anything, also, while they're being accused of preparing to give lethal aid to Russia in their war with Ukraine, they're trying to negotiate a settlement between Russia and Ukraine as well. Yeah. Um, they introduced a, a 12-point plan of things that they want to uh, to value in some kind of peace agreement or ceasefire agreement, um, which even Vladimir Zelensky said that he liked, yeah, or at least liked parts of it. 
Well, and we've came out pretty openly not liking the idea of a ceasefire. Exactly. Which is insane to me. Yeah. Like how you can sit here and be like, oh, we got to support Ukraine and poor Ukraine. And then when an opportunity comes for a ceasefire, be like, oh, no, we can't do that. Like that's like that's insane to me. Yeah. I, I mean, you know, U.S. politicians have talked about uh, how lucky we are to have Ukraine there fighting the Russians and they'll fight to the last Ukrainian and so on. Yeah. And we want to weaken Russia and we want, you know. It, yeah. Th- our goal is not. It's not peace. It's not the good of Ukraine. It's damn sure not peace. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, uh, so China is the one stepping up on the world stage and being the peacemaker. Yeah. Instead of the United States, it's supposed to be us. Yeah. For all those people out, all those patriotic Americans out there that talk about the U.S. great place in the world, important place in the world, yeah. our important place in the world, if we have one, is as a peacemaker. And that's not what we're doing. Mm. We're stoking war everywhere. Exactly. And we're upset about this agreement in the Middle East, too, because that big divide between Saudi Arabia and Iran is a huge divide to, to keep chaos and so and conflict going yeah. in the Middle East. Absolutely. So, uh. <laughs> see, my cat's upset about it too. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> uh. And uh, the the big one of the big talking points that I kept hearing on U.S. media about the um, the Russia Ukraine plan, it. <laughs> No, sit on another chair, <laughs> Kitty. I'm on, this one's mine. <laughs> um, is the the one of the points was about respecting sovereignty? Yeah. And uh, the U.S. media kept saying, "Whose sovereignty? Whose sovereignty yeah. are they trying to respect?" And this is another one of those those things that this is like this is is at least as old as the Cold War in the United States. This way of thinking. Yeah. Um, and it was uh, echoed by. Actually, probably more explicitly by um, uh, Bush the Younger in the terror war, where there's no such thing as neutrality in the world. Yeah. That you're either with us or you're against us. So if you're not on our side, you're on the other side, even if you're trying not to take a side. Yeah. And I and I did that thing on uh, Vietnam um, a month ago or roughly. And uh, I was talking about the war, the the secret war in Laos. And that's what it was all about. That's why we were in Laos as much as anything else is because Laos had declared its neutrality. And in the Cold War way of thinking, you couldn't be neutral. You're yeah. either on the side of capitalism and freedom or your side of communism and authoritarianism. And there was nothing in between. You couldn't not take sides. Yeah. And we said the same thing during the terror war and we're doing the same thing now. Yeah. Uh, that the... the, the U.S. government and the U.S. media just cannot fathom um, an approach that respects both sides. And yeah. here's the thing about mediating a conflict. Yeah, you can't mediate from one side or the other. Yeah, like, you, you can't take sides if you're going to mediate a conflict. Yeah, exactly. And uh, so it, it is actually possible that China's in there and they will respect both sides and aren't actually taking sides in this. And, and I think well, that that's least, probably the case. Well, and at least enough to get a settlement. Exactly. Because um, China doesn't benefit from this conflict. Yeah. China is about building economic power. Yeah. And and, and this disrupts that. Well, and, and it matters to them as far as clout in the world. Absolutely. Um, like, I mean, don't make no mistake. I mean, I think what I think that while they they do want to unwind this the, a lot of it is self interest as far as we can come in and show mm-hmm. that hey we can do this and we can we can sell these differences between countries yeah um and that's a, that i mean that means something yeah it's also self interest in terms of economic power yeah that it just you know this is a disruption of the the global market this oh, conflict oh yeah this conflict has been horrible for global markets yeah um, and, of uh, all kinds and and china is a big player in the global market like it or not yeah oh yeah and so they they benefit economically from an end to this conflict just yeah. like all of us do which by the way so do we yeah absolutely mm-hmm. like this this hadn't been good for our economy either no although it's all voluntary as far as sanctions are concerned but it still hasn't been good it hasn't been good for the everyday people mm-hmm. like i mean you know say what you will about how good or bad it is for the government but it ain't good for us yeah 
Yeah, absolutely. The yeah, the U.S. government is not concerned about poor people in this country when they encourage this conflict to continue. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Um, I mean, that's all I really have. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, after we fix the the uh, recorder crashing. <laughs> um, I think we're at about roughly the right time. Yeah. Uh, okay. So there is um, the uh, Libertarian Party of Alabama is having their convention this weekend in Auburn. Um, you can go to lpalabama.org if you're interested in coming up there. You don't actually have to be a member. I mean, you have to be a member to, to like vote. really participate, to vote and so forth. But you can definitely come and sit in and meet people and see what's going on and, and so forth. Yeah. Um, I will be there. Liberty Larry will not. I will not. I can't make it this year. So it's the first one I've missed. At least I, in a long time. My my big decision right now is which whiskeys am I taking? Ah, yes. <laughs> the the big questions, right? Yes. <laughs> yeah. So. Um I and I'm uh I'm going in my own car, so I'll have a trunk so I can actually take things that are already open. Oh nice. So so that makes lots, it even more complicated. Lots of <laughs> lots of decisions to be made. So. I, I don't know if I told you. I counted up the other night. I have seventy bottles of spirits in this house. Wow, that's impressive. Yeah. I don't that's have a, enough space for them. I um, I would have more, but I've run out of cabinet space. <laughs> you have no cabinet space. Uh, you need to buy like one of those. I'm gonna old... start setting my dishes out on the counter so that I have room for whiskey <laughs> for bottles. <laughs> no, you need to buy you like one of those old china cabinets like people have. Well, that's what I have. That's what's in there right now. Yeah, but you need a bigger one. <laughs> I do need a bigger one. <laughs> you need I, like I don't, I don't really a have big space one. for it. Yeah, that, uh, that's the problem. Like the one that I have in there, like I had to, I had to rearrange tables and chairs just to, to make room it. to be able to get in and out of it. Yeah. Uh, so I don't know. My kitchen yeah. sucks. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> liquor cabinet doesn't necessarily have to be in the kitchen. That's, I guess that's true. Um, but I can't put in, I couldn't put it in this yeah. room. I'm looking either. around. You don't have a lot of wall space. No. <laughs> uh, if I converted that into a bar, like was the, so I have the people listening, obviously can't <laughs> see what I'm pointing at. Um, yeah. I have in, in like a, an old, old, like world war two era, um, record player and stereo, the, like one of the big fold out things. It's got the little cabinets on the side for your vinyl and yeah. and so forth. It's actually got vinyl, like old Rat Pack stuff and stuff in there right now. Yeah. Like old collectible. The anyway, um, I what I had planned to do with that is to turn it into a bar. Yeah. To have it converted, have like uh, because the electronics don't work anymore. Yeah, got it. And rather than yeah, rather than try and fix it. Yeah. Um, to just like gut it and turn it into a bar. That'd be cool. Yeah. Um, but I haven't done that. And yeah. it, even then it would only have room for mm, maybe half a dozen bottles. Yeah. Which is nothing in your <laughs> no, collection. I know. I know. <laughs> but um, it would be cool. Yeah. But I could also, I, I could, <laughs> nobody's interested in this probably. <laughs> um, I, I could also, um, uh, transfer some bottles into decanters and put them on there oh, yeah. and it would look really nice. That and, would be nice. So, so um, if you're in Auburn, Alabama this weekend, look up Liberty Mike. Yeah. And he will have a drink of very nice whiskey with you. Probably. Probably. Yeah. Um, I, I decided not to stay at the hotel where the thing's going there. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah. It came up as three stars. Like, oh, yeah. <laughs> when you've barely gotten half of the available stars, I don't stay in this kind of hotel anymore. <laughs> yeah, that's not your, that's not <laughs> that, your jam. I, I, paid, I paid an extra like... Fifteen dollars a night for a, a Airbnb not far away. Well, Airbnb is the way to go to. Yeah, and I have a like much more space to myself with a kitchen. I can even cook. Ah, right, there you go. I can. I got space to mix cocktails. I can cook. Yeah. Yeah. Be... So look, look, Liberty Mike <laughs> yeah, up when exactly. you get there. <laughs> He's got a kitchen and everything. Yep. <laughs> um. But uh. So we we're planning to be back. Okay. I don't... Next week should still be else. good, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, I'm trying to think. I've, I've got. I gotta make plans with my other cousin to go to Switzerland. Also, yeah. I'm hoping to do that in the next couple of months. So we will probably miss a podcast when I'm in Switzerland. Yeah. Because it'll be hard to do from there. Yeah. That's a lot of extra stuff to carry across the pond. <laughs> All right. Um, and it's expensive. Gotta take a show kit, man. Yeah. Trying to like, I could probably fit everything I absolutely need to record. Um, we we didn't get a big box from GI Greg, right? We got a smaller phone box. I don't know. I'm not sure what you're talking about. 
I thought that he'd given us a, a foam, uh, one of those insulated foam boxes that you can like cut out the foam and oh, stick maybe. stuff in. But I don't think it was, I don't think it was big enough for everything you yeah. needed to, to record. I don't know. I can't remember now. I have to go pull it out. We'll we'll see. All right. Well, let's wrap it up as long as we're just talking about stuff that we can definitely talk about offline. Yep. And that probably the people that are listening are like, oh my God, what? <laughs> yeah. Why would I care about any of this? Um, hopefully not. Hopefully they're interested enough in our lives. Yeah. <laughs> at this point. And they're, and they're going to Auburn this weekend. Yeah. And, and maybe they're going to, and you can recognize my voice. Yep. <laughs> or you can just ask around. People know him. Yeah, there there are people there who know him. I, I did notice that on the uh the website for the um for the convention on the awards part when they were talking about the awards being given out, the picture our, they had our was awards. Ours. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Our award was up there. <laughs> so we're advertised inadvertently. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so all the people that are visiting that <laughs> and, and reading all the way down to all the awards. twenty of them. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> hey man, that's twenty more. Yep. Um Okay, so we'll try and be better, and uh, I probably should just in the future, like when we we find out we're gonna miss something, we should just post something. Yeah, on and that's me. Like I, I, I kind of. I know sorta, this is your responsibility. This is my responsibility, and I definitely dropped the ball on the Facebook page. Yeah, there's a bunch of memes up there. Oh well. Well, great. <laughs> At least you're keeping people entertained. <laughs> yeah, in the none, none of them say anything about us missing the podcast, yeah. but. <laughs> Um, but no, we haven't died. The, the podcast isn't over. We'll, we're maybe next time I'll make a meme about us missing the podcast. Okay. How about that? That sounds great. You can have one in reserve for (laughs) the other thing is that we had talked several times about, um, whenever you were available, uh, recording kind of, um, double or not. Yeah. Evergreen episodes that we could put up when we were going to miss one. Yeah. I still want to do that. Like, I think that's a, yeah, but you have to call me to do that. Yeah, I know. (laughs) (laughs) So, uh, but as it stands, we plan to be back next week. Um, In the meantime, you can follow us on Facebook. Uh, You can subscribe on iTunes, YouTube, Podbean, uh, like and share, um, leave reviews. Uh, You can comment. You can email me at Michael at the Liberty Mike. Um, Yeah, that's all the stuff, right? Roughly. All the things. So, uh, Yeah, and then you can listen to us next week when we finally get this right. And in the meantime, try to stay free. Life's short, live free. Ciao. Later.